Hey everybody, good to see you back again. The goal of today's video is to get both gear sets out of 1113's transmission. So we're gonna jump right into it today. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to reaching down in there elbow deep. <laughs> but, okay, first we need to do a little bit of housekeeping as I mentioned in the prior video. What I'm gonna have to do before anything else is get the input shaft put back in the front of that transmission. Now, if you remember from the clutch work, I had to take the input shaft off with the clutch assembly still on it because of all the rust that was in that bell housing. Oh, look at that. We got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've since cleaned the pinion shaft and inspected the bearings. I'll tell you what, this one is about as close to perfect as you can get. I can't even tell that's been used. So hopefully everything else in the transmission looks the same way. And also, there's a captured roller bearing inside the gear. That one's in good condition also. But that roller bearing is the reason why I have to put that input shaft back in. That supports the front of the pinion shaft right here. So I need to have that pinion shaft returned to its normal axis so that I can check my backlash and contact pattern between that pinion and bevel gear. I want to get a baseline for where this was set up before I take it all apart. I already know I've got a little bit in play on the bevel gear shaft because if you remember when I had this outside I was busting this rear end down I pointed out how when I would pull one steering clutch lever the other one would pop forward and vice versa that's a little bit of in play that's beginning on that bevel gear shaft so I know we have to do a shim adjustment there but I want to get a good like I said baseline reading to see where all this stuff started out at and I can't do that until I have the front of that pinion shaft supported so We'll actually put a nice clean piece back into that thing. Because am I ever looking forward to reaching into that elbow deep today? <laughs> All right. And I, I did clean this up a little bit in there. This was just too nice to throw in with everything so dirty. But get this lined in again. There. We'll just pretend it's been there the whole time. Okay, so we're set up on the bevel gear to check backlash. I'm seeing 23. That's wide. Now I've put some marking compound on the teeth and I've ran it through to check the contact pattern. What I'll usually do here is load the shafts as much as I can by hand, run them through their mesh one time, and then assess the pattern. And then I will run them through probably two to three more times after that and then reassess to see if much changed. In this case, nothing really changed, but we'll see if we can get the GoPro in here. These are not very good for focusing close up and dealing with light and dark and everything we have going on here, but you can see, I'll roll this up a little bit. We have the heel out here. We have the toe in here. You can see we have heavy toe contact happening, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The manual says that they want to have heavy contact on the toe and then contact extending up uh, probably 30% across the face of each tooth. Now, this is a worn gear set and we're running a loose bevel gear shaft with some wide backlash, so take that all into account. But as I roll this down here, you can see like this one starts out heavy toe and then it was just close enough to start mashing out some of the brush strokes that I had in the compound. These are much the same, heavy toe, and just starts to remove the brush strokes, if you can pick that up on this camera. So, in reality, on a worn gear set, I think, my opinion, I think that contact pattern would be fine because the pinion shafts in these are set on ball bearings. Ball bearings allow a certain amount of deflection to happen, and when put under load, these heavy toe contact patterns will flatten out. So, in my opinion, that would be good enough to put back together and run. What I don't like about this, though, all right, we'll just reach in here and get a little full of grease. See, some of these teeth started getting some rust on them. It does not look as good in here as it does in the transmission. I'd like that to be a lot better, but at this point it is what it is. So I think I skipped over backlash spec with seven to nine. We're running 23. So, well, at this point it is what it is. But one last thing I wanna point out, 
also for checking the heel contact of the bevel gear and pinion they give you this little plug right right here that you can knock out and that gives you a straight line of sight down into the heel areas of those two gears where you could have a look i don't usually knock those out because with the advent of little adjustable mechanics inspection mirrors you can see all that just as well without having to knock that out and then you have to replace that plug again so we have some work to do in that bevel gear compartment um at this point we have to get it apart to really assess to really look at everything see how things clean up i would prefer it if that bevel gear did not have so much rust on the teeth at this point we just have to get it apart and see what's going on once it's all on the bench but it's good to make all those checks first so at least we know what our original setup is we have our starting point so from here we can proceed we're not just you know navigating blind and now we can take this input shaft out again this is the point where it would normally be taken out for the first time if we wouldn't have had the special set of circumstances that required it to be pulled out with the clutch but there's that. Oh, I'm gonna have to clean that again. <laughs> Next, we unbolt the pinion bearing cage from the rear wall of the case. Three bolts, one right here, one there, and one there. Each has a fold over lock beneath it. I've already flattened all of those. Now with the bolts out, you can pull the pinion shaft and bearing cage forward just enough to access the shims that are on the back side. At this point, you want to pull those shims out of there because you don't want them to be damaged. You definitely want to keep them in order because these are what set pinion depth. And you can see they're slotted at the bottom, so even if you didn't have all three bolts all the way out, you could still pull those out of there. See a couple in there yet? You want to get them all out of there because you don't want to nick them, kink them, bend them, anything like that. I see at least one more in there. There, that should be all of them. Set those aside, <laughs> keep them in a safe place. Now we can carefully walk that bearing cage the rest of the way out of case wall. And now we can lift that entire shaft with all the gears straight out the top. So you have to slide the shaft forward far enough to get the pinion gear to clear that case wall. And then lift it up at the rear and it'll come out the top. And make sure you're holding on to the gear set because it'll slide right off the end of the shaft otherwise. All right, all we have left now is the counter shaft and reverse idler gear. So counter shaft comes out next. First thing you'll do is remove the nuts from this square cover. Take that off. Behind it, you'll see two small bolts with a fold over lock. Remove those bolts and the washer beneath them. And at this point, the counter shaft can be withdrawn from that bearing and pulled clear out the back of the case and as you pull it off each one of those gear sets will slide off the shaft just catch it get it up on top work your way all the way back until all the gears are off the shaft the shaft is out of the case
there's the shaft. And with the shaft out, that front bearing and retainer can come out of the case. Interesting deal. That bearing's been replaced at one point. That is a sealed bearing. It should be an open ball bearing. First time I've seen one of those in there. My manual also states that there should be two quarter by 20 tapped holes in that flange where you can put a couple bolts in to pull that out. I personally have not been into a D2 yet that's had those. but So the final thing in the case is the reverse idler gear and shaft. Let's get this light in a more manageable position, shall we? Sorry about that. So we have a fold over lock and a set bolt with a jam nut. We'll want to get all three of those out of there. And now we can withdraw the shaft and the gear shaft will slide out forward. One thing to note, the manual states that the rounded tips on the gear teeth face to the rear because the gear that meshes with it slides in from that direction. So. That's how you want to orient that when you put it back in, since it can be put in either way. Shaft is out. And finally the gear has a roller bearing inside. And with that, we've got both gear sets out of the case. We've got a lot of thick stuff to clean out of the bottom, but that's pretty much to be expected. So at this point now, we only have the bevel gear shaft and gear left in there. That's not a very big compartment down there, but it's a lot of work to get those pieces out. A lot of tools come into play, a lot of pulling, a lot of force required back there. So that's gonna be tomorrow's job. Like I said, gear sets on the bench, and honestly, I'm not quite as optimistic about the condition of these things. As I was this morning, I don't like the pitting that I'm seeing on there, but it is what it is at this point. We got to get that bevel gear out of that case, get it on the bench, and we're going to have a real good look at what else is going on. And we finished off a couple more shop rags today. It doesn't take long when you get into this stuff. I'm going to be lucky if I don't have to burn this sweatshirt when I'm done, too. Oh, you get just, just nasty, especially when you got to start reaching in those areas. But I'd rather get it on my sleeves than on my skin. So... All right, thanks for watching again. We had a decent day in the shop. Things didn't go too badly, so tomorrow we'll dig into that bevel gear and we'll see how that treats us. So thanks for watching, everybody. Please tune in again to see that.